Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another vlog. My sleep schedule has been not the best. The last few days I've been working on trying to get back to my normal sleeping schedule and earlier wake up time. It's been a little rough the last few mornings, but I'm excited because today is super sunny. I'm one of those people, I 100% get my energy and my life source from the sun. If I wake up in the morning and it's cloudy and dark outside, I will have the hardest time getting out of bed. But today it's really sunny and warm out. So I'm excited to start my day and have a good day. I'm working at the salon today. So of course I'm gonna bring you along. It's gonna be a bit of a longer day for me though. I have two clients, but I have a little bit of a gap between the two of them. So I will probably not be done until around eight o'clock tonight. The first client I have coming in is coming for a balayage and she came in several weeks ago for a haircut. Her hair is really thick and dark naturally. And when I first met her and we did her haircut, we discussed her hair color and I have so many pretty inspiration pictures. Anytime I've been scrolling through Instagram and I see a pretty color that is similar to what we discussed, I've been saving it. So I can't wait to show her the pictures that I saved and see what she thinks about that. And it's just gonna be so pretty. And she is just so nice. And she also has gorgeous hair. So it's gonna be a win-win. Like doing her hair is gonna be enjoyable. And also, you know, hanging out with her and talking with her throughout the duration of the appointment will be good too. That's the best when you have clients that you just click with and the conversation is just like really easy and just flows naturally. Cause people ask me if I ever get nervous when I have a new client coming in for the first time. And it kind of depends. Like most of the time nowadays that I am more experienced and I'm more confident in not only my actual hair skills, but also my consultation skills. I don't really get nervous, but I don't know. Some days I guess I kind of do a little bit because you just never know what to expect, especially if you haven't already done like a pre-consult with them and you don't even know what they look like or what their hair looks like. You truly have no idea what's going to walk through the door. So sometimes that can be a little scary because it's like, oh God, is this going to end up being a crazy color correction? Do I have the appropriate amount of time blocked out for this person? And then you just never know what their personality is gonna be like. Are you gonna click with them? Are they gonna be nice? Do they have realistic expectations? Or are they gonna be, you know, a little uh, cuckoo and impossible to please? Luckily, I feel like those clients have been like few and far between for me lately, but it definitely still happens. <laughs> You really just never know. And that aspect of it can be a little bit nerve wracking. But like I said, the more experience that you get, you just kind of know how to handle those types of situations. So even if you get a client that's difficult, you know how to handle it. But it is nice when people can come in for an in-person consultation or like this girl today come in for a haircut so we can consult about the color before the actual color appointment. That way going into it, I already know exactly what to expect. And then my second client is actually one of my friends and it's been several months since she got her hair done. Her hair is naturally pretty dark and she likes it to be super blonde. Okay, makeup is done. I just did my usual routine that I've been doing recently with the ColourPop Nude Mood eyeshadow palette. And I usually just mix these two bottom shades and use a little angled brush like that. And I do a little wing with the eyeshadow. And then my lips, I had did Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Liner. And then I put this gloss on top from Pixi in the shade Sheer Rose. God, if you guys saw my last, or like two vlogs ago, when I toned my hair, it's already been a little over two weeks since I had did that. And I've been out in the sun. I don't know if you can tell, but I've been working on my summer tan and it has already faded back pretty much to where it was at. And my roots are starting to become noticeable again. I'm trying to decide what to do. I do like the copper color, but it's just really hard to maintain and to keep it like the perfect 
even shade of copper that I like. And then when my roots grow in, they're so obvious. So I don't know. Part of me wants to just go brown again. Like maybe not as dark as it was before, but like a chocolatey brown, just solid all over. And then another part of me wants to do a balayage because I kind of miss having the dimension and like the little money piece and all that. Like I just feel like that's fun for summer. And then having the dimension when I wear my hair curly is really pretty. But anyway, I blow dried my hair last night. So now I'm just kind of smoothing it out and putting a little flip on the ends. This is the Wavy Talk thermal brush, thermal round brush that was super viral on TikTok a few months ago. And I actually really like this. Cause it's not like a blow dry brush that blows air out. It just gets hot to the touch, but then it has these bristles that grip your hair. So it gives you the look of a blowout and you can just do it on your hair dry. Okay, there we go. Just a little something, a little flip on the ends. And then I'm gonna do these earrings. I just got these last week at TJ Maxx. The brand is Every. Never heard of it before, but they're so fun. They remind me of like clip-on earrings my mom used to have back in the 90s. But yeah, the TJ Maxx jewelry section has been good. I don't really go in there that often. I got these the same time. How freaking cute. These are from the House of Harlow brand. So pretty. I wore these last week. You can tell I wear these to work a lot because in the little like crevices, there's these tiny little hairs and can't forget my perfume. I've really been into the Ambery Cherry from Dossier lately. Okay, so here is my outfit for the day. Don't mind my messy room. The whole apartment is a mess. I have laundry. This is not even dirty laundry. This is a pile of clean laundry. My brother was in town for Easter weekend. So yeah, I just did not get any of my chores done. Anyway, here's the outfit for today. This top is from Old Navy. Pants are from Aeropostel. And then the shoes are from Target. And I know it's probably dangerous to wear an all white outfit to go work in a hair salon. But I'm gonna try my best to be careful. Both of my clients today are just getting highlights. So it's just gonna be bleach. So hopefully the clothes will be fine. I'm gonna grab my stuff and head out of here. I will see you at the salon. So this was client number one's hair before. Like I said, she's got a lot of it. She has really thick, beautiful hair. And she does have some old kind of faded grown out highlights from a couple years ago. But the goal was to give her beautiful ribbons of like a coppery brown kind of color, but keep it really low maintenance and blended, dimensional. So I did a full head of TZ lights, a combination of TZ lights with T slices so that it would still be blended and soft towards the top, but you would definitely get those pops of color on the ends. And it turned out so beautiful. I'm obsessed. She loved it amazing and then this was my friend Madison's hair as you can see it was quite grown out and a little bit more solid so her grow out was you know more noticeable and she had a lot of dimension that was left in the back she wanted to get rid of the dimension make the ends completely solid and just make it brighter and more icy so you can see her roots i just blurred them out so beautifully so she's still super super blonde but it'll be a softer more seamless grow out it's just so pretty i'm obsessed good afternoon it's the next day it is already <laughs> almost 2 30. i'm telling you it's something about those really big hair appointments like i can work an eight to ten hour shift and have like four standard appointments and feel fine. But if I have like one or two really big appointments, it just completely drains the life out of me. I'm very grateful that today I don't have to work. Today, actually, on Monday, I was looking at the weather for the week and planning out what I was gonna do when, and I knew it was gonna be raining all day today, so today was the day I planned to just stay home 
and clean the apartment. So I'm grateful that today I can just stay home and I have stuff that I need to do, but there's no time crunch for it. So yeah, slept in very late today and I'm still in my pajamas. I was about to go lay in bed and <laughs> just watch YouTube videos on my laptop, maybe watch a movie or something. I turned the AC up, so that is blasting right now and it is so cold and that's just what I wanna do. Like I want to have the AC turned up and get under the covers and just get cozy and watch some YouTube videos, relax. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be the perfect day to like recharge my social battery too. Cause I'm just gonna stay home and not talk to anybody. Love these days. I really needed yesterday. I'm feeling really good today. Well rested, social battery is charged on full. So I'm making myself a cappuccino this morning. Oh, look at that. So beautiful. I'm gonna pour in my espresso and then I'm gonna put a little bit little bit of sugar and then we got our steamed milk and i'm gonna put a little bit of cinnamon on top amazing delicious i need to remember to take an allergy pill before i leave <laughs> pollen is intense this year and i have my windows open because it's so nice outside and i want to get the fresh air but it is making me sneeze like crazy it is several hours later it's almost 1 30. i Finally put my laundry away. Let me show you. All that laundry, gone. Put everything away. Closet is all nice and organized again. But I'm getting ready now to go to my friend Haley's house. We are going to make dinner and some drinks and just hang out. And then we're going to a T-Pain concert. I'm so excited. There is this big festival that they do here in Wilmington every year called the Azalea Festival. And this is like my third spring living here. And this is gonna be my first time going to it. And they always have a bunch of different concerts. This year, one of the concerts is a T-Pain concert. And I'm especially looking forward to it because it's Thursday today. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be home all day. I have computer work stuff I need to do, like, you know, some admin things, but I don't have to be in the salon. So I feel like I can actually go out tonight and have a good time, let loose, stay out late. That's the one thing that kind of sucks about working on Saturdays. If my friends wanna go out and do something Friday night, I'll have work the next morning, so I gotta, you know, be careful. Especially now as I'm getting older, my body can't bounce back from sleep deprivation and being out all night drinking. I need way more time to recover nowadays. So yeah, that'll be fun. I'm not entirely sure what time the concert's supposed to end at, or if there's gonna be stuff going on afterwards, if we're gonna end up staying out. We can kind of just like let the night take us. The only thing that's kind of a bummer is it's been so warm and beautiful out. And I mean, it is a beautiful day. It's really sunny and it's not cold, but I think the high is only supposed to be in like the low to mid 60s. And then the low tonight is gonna drop down to like the 40s. It just figures like the last two nights, even at nine o'clock, it was still warm out. It'd be nice if uh, tonight would have been like that too, but whatever. Okay, makeup is done except for lips. But I'm about to do my hair and I thought I would show you how I'm doing it because I know I get requested to share hair tutorials and I feel like slick backs, parted slick backs specifically, have been requested. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. First things first though, because I want to do half up and then I'll leave the bottom down. So first I'm going to Load up my hair with dry shampoo. The IGK Charcoal Detox is my absolute favorite. And then just kinda zhuzh it 
Let it soak up all that oil. When I am doing a slick back and I want to keep a part, I will take a chunk like this. It does not have to be exact, but just leave some of this out. This is going to hold your part. Clip that out of the way. You want to get yourself a brush like this with bristles like this. This one's from Amazon, super inexpensive. I'll put a link in the description, but you could get this anywhere. But this is gonna get like really good grit on your hair and allow you to really pull it back tight. I usually like to just kind of follow like where my ears are at and then just see how much hair that leaves down. And then I obviously can't see the back of my head, but I'm gonna just take my finger across and try to make a straight-ish parting. I'm sure it's not straight at all, but it's fine. I'm actually, I'm gonna ponytail off the bottom that I'm leaving out. Now that that is sectioned out of the way, I'm gonna grab all the hair that is gonna go in my ponytail. Brush that out. You obviously wanna make sure before you do this that you don't have any tangles in your hair. I am going to get this hair wet. Cause when it's wet, it just slicks down better. So now I have that, my ponytail all pulled back. There's a little bit of lumps and bumps. And now I'm gonna grab this brush and I'm gonna just slick back. Push it back and then Grab it with your hands. So there we go. Now that is pulled back. Make sure it's like at the height where you want it to be. Now I'm gonna let these front pieces down. Now I'm gonna take this bottom section out so I have the hair tie for that. And I'm just gonna tie this off into a ponytail. Again, wet this up top and just brush it so that it's nice and smooth and just pull it back into that ponytail like that. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm going to pull these pieces like behind the ponytail so that they're kind of like wrapped around. Make sure it's slicked back. Everything is flat. And then take a second hair tie. And I actually want this to be a bun. So. I'm not gonna pull it all the way through. I'm just gonna do a little like top knot situation. Wet these ends. I like to have like the little pieces that kind of stick out on the side. And then once you have it the way you want it, as far as like the positioning and it's all good and you got majority of the lumps and bumps out. Now I am taking this got to be glued hair gel and I am gonna just gently, I rub it between my hands and I'm just gently passing it over the top and just pushing back on the hair. And then I'm gonna take some on the little ends if you you know like these little pieces that stick out this gel i'm telling you is like intense <laughs> so you can make those stick out however you want okay now that 
the top part is done. I am gonna go over the bottom hair that I left out with that wavy top brush again. And I'm gonna just flip the ends. And then I'm gonna take hairspray and this is really gonna just set everything in place. This way, you know, like my hair is not going to budge. It is going to be secure. So even if it is crazy windy, my hair's not going anywhere. The Paul Mitchell Neuro Finishing Spray. Love this stuff. It smells so good too. There is the hair for the evening. I feel so like Spice Girls, 90s, early 2000s kind of vibes. Okay, here is my outfit. Sorry that it's a little bit dark. The leather jacket is from H&M. These pants are from Express. I'll try to get some clips tonight, but uh, no promises. I'm trying to live in the moment and whatnot. Yep. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah, you fall in love with this area. I didn't end up vlogging anything yesterday because I just didn't do anything exciting. It was another day where I just stayed home, got computer work done, washed my hair. Oh my God, you should have saw the slick back. I wish I got a clip of it. When I came home and took my hair down, it still just stayed exactly as is basically. <laughs> she was secure. So definitely had to wash that. And I got more laundry done, washed all my bed sheets, that kind of stuff. So it was like a little bit of a reset day sort of, but the concert was really fun. But today I'm working at the salon. I'm a little bit nervous. My hairstylist instincts are tingling a little bit because my day is fully booked. It was fully booked a few days ago, but my first client canceled. So I had my morning open and then yesterday the front desk booked someone with me for this morning and this is a new client. She was booked for a highlight and haircut, but then the front desk person added a note saying, Client says she has severely bleach damaged hair. So like that's strange and a red flag to me. And we require having a credit card on file for our cancellation policy. There is no card on file. This note says that the credit card form was sent to this person to fill out. She obviously never filled it out. I am really nervous because a, I don't even know if this person's gonna show up. B, if she does show up, I have no idea what to expect. I don't know if it's gonna be the right fit for me, if what she's gonna want is going to be realistic or, you know, like, I just like there's a lot of weirdness. Like I'm getting red flags from this. And I texted the front desk girl and she hasn't answered me yet. So I'm wondering, I kind of feel like I should just call the salon because I'm not sure who's working today. So I feel like I should just call the salon, see who's there and be like, hey, can you call this girl and like just confirm that she's planning on coming? Because I, oh my God. Obviously it's not okay to no show your appointment ever. But like if it's the last person of the day, then it's like, all right, well, I'll go home now at least. But when it's your first one of the day or like right in the middle of your day, oh, that is, mm -mm. I wanted to share this for any of my fellow hairstylists, especially if you are a newer stylist or if you're in cosmetology school or anything like that. I still try to give people benefit of the doubt. I just feel like that's only fair. And I hope that I always stay that way. Like I don't want to become this like, you know, miserable jaded person that just assumes the worst out of everybody <laughs> but i have learned over the years doing hair and dealing with people and dealing with shady people and getting taken advantage of and screwed over and all that kind of stuff you just get these instinctual feelings and you just know what feels right and what doesn't uh quick little update 
I texted the person that is doing the front desk today. It's not the same person that was there yesterday who booked this client. I asked her if she could call my first client because I was like, yeah, I don't know. I just have like a sketchy feeling and we don't have her card on file. So can you just call her and just confirm that she's planning on coming? She said she called her twice and no answer. I called twice, went straight to voicemail, but I left a message. That is not a good sign. If I had spoke to this client myself when I was booking, like first of all, I would say, hey, we need your card information on file in order to book an appointment. So I wouldn't have even booked it without the card information first. But then I also would have just clarified like, the appointment will not be confirmed until we have your credit card on file. So your stylist is not going to show up unless we have your card information on file. Because now, like a big part of me is telling me to just not even bother going in because I really have a strong feeling that she's not gonna show up. But then what if she does? That's gonna make me look bad because as far as the client knows, she has an appointment that's booked. So you would assume and expect your stylist to be there. Either way, today will be a good day because my other two clients are super nice and it's gonna be easy. I'm not like, this is gonna be the easiest salon day I've had in a long time because I'm not doing a crap ton of foiling and dealing with a lot of hair. By the way, here is my outfit for the day. I actually feel really cute and it's really comfy. So I'm loving this outfit and I just threw it together super fast. This set, the shirt and pants, I actually got from Amazon. I'll link it down below. And then this shirt is from Urban Outfitters. I just tucked it up because it's really big and oversized. It's actually kind of like a t-shirt dress. So I tucked it into my bra and then I'm wearing my high top Converse. I'll see you at the salon. So to my surprise, my first client ended up calling the salon as I was about to leave and said she was on her way. So normally I swear I try to give people benefit of the doubt and I feel like there's been so many times where I will feel kind of naive like oh yeah it'll be fine they'll show up and then they don't so this was the first that I was like just had the instinct that she wasn't going to show and then she did but this was her hair before so she had just been getting like bleach and tones very high maintenance color and her hair really like was not that damaged it, I mean, it was a little bit. It was kind of overprocessed, but just what you would expect from someone that's like a platinum blonde all over. So what she wanted was something that was going to be a little bit more low maintenance so she wouldn't have to be bleaching her hair as frequently. So I did little baby lights around her hairline to brighten those up. And then everything else in between, I actually painted on a low light and I just dragged it down a few inches from her root just so we could soften up and blur that like root area. So I did a root smudge and a gloss on her hair after that. And this was the final hair. It was so stunning. Like I even kind of blew myself away to be honest and she loved it. She ended up being so nice. So Thank God, crisis averted. And then my second client is actually my friend's mom. She is amazing, super easy. As you can see, she doesn't really have a lot of hair. And she only comes and gets her hair done a couple times a year. So I just do a bunch of fine baby lights all over just so that it's really low maintenance and blended and easy. And this was her final hair, super pretty. Gave her a little bit of a money piece. She's been liking that. And then my third client came in for a Malibu CPR treatment. So it was a two-step process. I did the Malibu color disruptor first and then followed by the CPR treatment. Basically, she had really, really dark hair, naturally has dark hair, went and got it lightened somewhere else, didn't like it, felt like it was really uneven and it felt really damaged. And yeah, so we've just, it's just been kind of a journey. This was step one in the process to kind of remove the dark color she had because that was, that was the thing. She didn't like the lighter color, so she put a dark box color on it. So I wanted to remove that, kind of see what we were working with, give her a nice haircut, and I'm excited to see where we go from here. Hello, it is 
many hours later. It is like nine o'clock now. I was going to maybe go meet up with my friends downtown, but we don't feel like it at all. Like the thought of going out right now and it's kind of cold out and I just want to get cozy in bed. But my clients went really well. That girl did not know show. She showed up and she was actually really cool. I was a little nervous because I wasn't sure. She was a little hard to read, but she ended up being really cool and she loved her hair in the end. Her sister came to pick her up and she loved her hair and she ended up booking an appointment with me. Yeah, it was just a good day. Like it was very smooth. It flowed well. I was able to clean as I go. Um, and everyone was just really cool and nice. I am gonna go change into my pajamas and go lay in bed. I'm gonna wrap up this vlog here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next video and I'll see you really soon. Bye.